Hi everybody, here's a continuous loop for the end of your hammock with a built-in soft shackle. Here's my soft shackle attached to some daisy chain webbing, and here's my continuous loop. The soft shackle features a noose, like a normal soft shackle, a large button knot, and then I also have the 8 inch continuous loop, and the end of my continuous loop works like a soft shackle, or carabiner, or other type of connecting device. So now I'll show you how to make one. Begin with 40 inches of 764 amp steel folded into a bite with one strand extending an inch and a quarter longer than the other. Like that. And then form the bite again and where the fold is, this is where we're going to create the noose. So take the splicing tool and go between your strands. You want four strands on either side because it's an eight strand rope. And then the longer strand, pull it through where you've gone in with your splicing tool. Here's the longer strand. I'm going to pull it through. And this forms the noose. So now just take the two ends and bring them so they line up with each other. And then form the bite again. And now you have a nicely shaped noose at the end of your bite. And now we can do the knot tying part of this. So now at 3.5 inches from the end of this noose, we want to control to, to these two strands right here. So 2, 3.5 right there. And to control the strands, we're going to use a piece of masking tape. Yes, I did add some distance by adding the masking tape. So the effective, oh, the effective length is 2, 3.5. So right at 3.5 is where we want to control the strands. So now we're going to tie the button knot that I use on the Evo loops. And I'm not going to go through the whole button knot because I have a separate video on that. But here's what you're going to have next. Once you tie the button knot there, you're going to have a piece that looks exactly like this. With the strands exiting. And normally you would take these two strands right here and bury them into here and you would have a soft shackle. However, you're just going to tie that knot right here, and then you'll have these two strands exiting. So once you have these two strands exiting your knot, you get rid of your tape, and you're just going to turn these two strands into a continuous loop. And to do that for this one, I'm going to go with a 3 inch berry, like this. So I'm just going to grab these two strands at 3 inches, and create a lock brummel. So, so I don't need to mark the strands or anything, because... Once I enter this, this length right here at 3 inches, it's going to be like my tape measure. So I just do the lock brummel by pulling this strand through. And then since that first strand that I entered is my, my 3 inch guideline, then I can just go into the next strand right at the same point. I'm just making a lock brummel continuous loop. For all you people that have spliced before, you know exactly where I'm going with this. So now I form the lock brummel by passing one strand through the other strand and then passing that strand back through the other one. I got the lock brummel right here, and then I'm just going to fold the strands back and bury them into themselves to finish off the continuous loop. For that, I'll use one millimeter bent stainless wire instead of the latch hook. A little bend in my wire right here it helps the 764s go into it. So one lock Brummel berry is done. And I can do the last one right here. For some reason this batch of orange amp steel is very stiff. Real nice. Huh. Let's try that again. Enter with the one millimeter bent wire. That's better. Grab the strand. 
pull through. So now that I have the last strand pulled through, I have a continuous loop. Here's my continuous loop, and then I have a little soft shackle hanging out here on the end. So that's all there is to it. It's pretty easy. You just make you make a soft shackle out of that first bite that you make, and then where the tails exit that knot that you make, you make a continuous loop out of those tails. Something to consider if you're thinking about making these for your hammock, the Evo loop by itself already has this built-in soft shackle function. I'll show you how. Here's my hammock gathered end, and here's my Evo loop. So if I go through the channel and hook the Evo loop to it, now I have a continuous loop. However, if I take the button knot and pass it back through this loop right here one more time, now I still have the same thing. I have the same function as what I built right here with less rope and less weight. So now this button knot on the end, I can also fold it back, pass it into the capture point, and I have a soft shackle. So this piece right here can go around the large end of a whoopee sling or a carabiner or any other type of thing and also function exactly like a continuous loop. So this is actually the same function as this. So I try to be all about simplicity and long-lasting components when I do this stuff. So there is another way you can use this Evo loop to create, to create this and have a stronger connection. One problem with doing it this way is the noose. If you study soft shackles, you realize that the noose is the fail point for all soft shackles. For one, it's the moving part of the shackle. This is where you're constantly going to be manipulating this thing. And for two, you only have one strand of strength at this point. So this is a potential fail point. So what you can do is, if you have a normal continuous loop on the end of your hammock, you can simply tie up a small Evo loop, a little one like this. And then you take that Evo loop and you do a Lark's Head type connection onto the end of your continuous loop, like this. So I have a Lark's Head type connection at the end of my Evo loop with the mini Evo. And what is this starting to look like? This looks like this, doesn't it? So, you can take, and this part now is a saw shackle. Say this right here was my daisy chain webbing or something else. I can just go like this, put that knot into the loop right there. And you notice that loop will close up as that large head slides down. That loop will close up, and I have an instant saw shackle. And this saw shackle is stronger than this soft shackle. Then of course when you're ready to disconnect it you just pull pull on the knot and this little noose right here this noose right here that's created with the main loop will open up and then your Evo loop is still hanging out on the end right here. And also if you do attach to here and pull this Lark's head close really tight this Lark's head will come loose anytime you just grab these strands and go like this. Just push on that loop and it will open up. So for an easier, stronger version, you can also just throw a mini Evo loop onto the end of a standard continuous loop. And then, like if you're out at the uh, group hang and your buddy forgets his carabiner, you can walk over there with your little mini Evo loop and be like, hey bro, no problem, let me fix you up. Throw the mini Evo loop onto the end of his continuous loop and now he has a soft shackle can attach to a whoopee sling daisy chain webbing anything else simply by taking this knot putting it into that noose and allowing it to close up and one last thing to show you guys i also see this version out there this is a fairly complicated build this one is really cool um, there is only one disadvantage to this that i see so far this one is one I've been using for a little while. These gray strands, the locked brummel that they're forming right here is shoved full of four strands. So this will work fine and it'll probably never fail under most conditions. But you're taking these, you're taking half of the strands right here 
from this strand and exposing them right here. So there's a lot of abrasion and there's a lot of taking that locked Brummel and just cramming it full of all these extra strands. So right here is a pretty good fail point for this, this whole build. So just something to consider. This one is going to be weaker and it's going to take even more to build it because you got to do all these locked Brummel inside of another locked Brummel splicing when you can simply take a mini Evo loop and attach it to a continuous loop like this. And as you can see, you have a fully functional saw shackle on the end of your continuous loop. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Hope that helps somebody.